making a quillow <coughs> and we're spreading out the bottom part we're going to put first we're going to put the two right sides together of the mirror So the part that's going to be facing out is actually face down right now. Yeah, the right sides are together. We've got the two right sides together. By that I mean this is the right side and then this will be the right side. And now this is a yard piece of batting, which is actually when you buy it a crib size batting. Okay. We're going to, now we're going to pin these together. Okay. That's good. I'm using I'm using a polyfill quilters 8020 quilt batting and it's crib size 45 by 60. I've got the three sides pinned together and uh, none of the materials are the same width so I'm going to cut it down to the narrowest which is this so I'm getting ready to cut that now so that it will be are you tacking down the side now no all, the, all, all four sides will be tacked when I'm through here. And hopefully there aren't any professional quilters or sewers watching this because I'm not a sewer. The short end, the short side that you're going to start with. And you're going to start, you're going to leave this part open between here and here. Start sewing about this far from the edge. I've got all the sides sewn. Remember I said leave open the end. So I've got about a foot and a half, about 18 inches. But first, because I've used such thick material, I want to trim these corners down a little so that when I turn them inside out, they'll lay a little flatter. So I just cut off around, make it round. Okay, I've got all four corners turned or trimmed. Now I'm getting ready to turn the quilt inside out and I'm going to go do this corner here so that you can see uh, where I rounded it off and now I'm going to push that through and because I am using thick material I want to make sure all the corners are as square as they can be. I'm going to just kind of punch that in and to make sure I get it all the way in as far as possible. Now I can start turning it inside out I've got, I've got these two corners where I trimmed them off. See how nice and square they are. Now I'm going to do these other two corners. I've got a dull pair of scissors here I'm using to punch through. You can maybe just use your finger. Okay, so there is your quilt. So now that we've got it turned inside out, this opening needs to be closed. So we'll pin that together and so that the 5 8 inch seam is against each other. Gotcha. So this was the about 18 inch opening or 12 inch and I've got it pinned together and now I'm just going to sew it real close to the edge and close that up. <coughs> okay. I have, I've cut two squares. Most people say to make your pillow 18 inches. And because I've used a thicker backing using the flat, not flannel, fleece, but fleece, it's pretty thick. So I make my pillow bigger. I go to 20 inches. And now I'm getting ready to put the right sides together of these. And I need and you see here I've, I've used both of the printed material for the pillow part. And I'm going to put those together. This is going to be my padding or quilting for the pillow. Now you can use batting. I'm using the fleece because I have plenty of it extra. And you, So you have the right sides together of the printed material. And then I'm going to use this as the liner. The, the, quilting part. So just match those up 
and pin and sew around the edges and I'll show you that in a minute. I've done this just like, like I did the big quilt. I've left a piece open here so that I can turn it inside out. And I'm getting ready to kind of trim the corners back so I can make sure they get plugged in real quick. As you can tell, I'm not a seamstress. I'm a probably more of a carpenter. <laughs> okay, but they seem to turn out okay. Okay, now I'm going to turn them inside out. Find my opening here. Push the corners in. And I'm using my dull scissors to make sure they're punched in. To each corner. So now I'm ready to pull the insides out. I start with the far end. <coughs> kind of work. I'm sure if you're a quilter, you're having nightmares with what I'm doing, but that's okay. This is for those of us who are not sewers. Okay, reach in. Yeah, that was good. That one looks good. Looks good. Looks good. Now we're ready to close this up. Just sew a little seam across there. Uh, I'm, I've got the pillow done now and it's sewn up across this end. But I want to kind of make it sturdier to hold together. So I'm going to, now you can measure this off if you want, but I'm just going to pretend like it's going right down the center. And I'm starting at the far corner. And I'm going to hold it out and use my nose to guide me. And so all the way across it. And line it up with this far corner. You can be as neat and as tight as you want. If you want to measure off and pin it and mark it some way, that's fine too. Okay. Now we're going to do the same thing from the other corner. And now we're going to the opposite corner. And I've got this, this is the end that was open that I sewed that little seam on the outside. And this is the same thing here. This was the, so you want the right side up. I'm just going to freehand it again. I am going to mark with a pin where the center is. And then I'm going to, I can tell where the center is here because the, I don't know if you can see it, but that was the center fold, so I know where the center is. And I'm just going to line up these ends and pin it, and then I'm going to sew that. You only got to pin these three sides. One, two, three. This is left open because that's the pocket that's going to put the quillow in. Can you tell them where your wrist pin cushion came from? The wrist pin cushion is from when I was in the eighth grade and had in, in my homemaking class. Of course, I don't think they even have homemaking class anymore. But that's where I got my sewing skills. What, what was from the my skills came from the eighth grade sewing class. And <coughs> sew this pocket, the three sides. But I always start here and sew this way and then this way. And then when that's done, then I come back over and sew this direction. Because if I start here, it might buckle down and end up with more material here. So I sew across and then up. Okay, I have the pocket sewn on now. What I did was started here on this far corner. And I sewed across here and then down. And then I took it out of the machine and put it in and sewed in this direction. That way, if there's any fabric loop bunching up, it'll bunch at that end and not come out uneven down here. So what I'm going to do is finish off the 
outer edge around the entire blanket by sewing a, a seam. So that's what I'm going to do. Now. Okay, we have our pillow on, and it's open at this end, right there. And I've sewn all the way around to finish it off. Hopefully I have all the pins out of it. Okay, so now we're going to, when I sewed it, there's a lot of stress on this corner of the pocket. So I double, I did a zigzag to finish that off. There, and on both sides, of course. Okay, now we're ready to fold this up. You're gonna lay it face down and fold in on third, thirds. You can, you'll use this seam here of the pocket as your guide. It'll fold in on itself. And right like that. And now we're gonna flip it over. And you're gonna reach in inside the pocket and you're gonna grab the corners and flip it out. Turn it over. Oh, just flipped over now, and I'm going to reach in and kind of smooth down and push the corners out of the blanket as much as I can, okay? And kind of make sure it's laying flat inside. Okay, now, you've got this and make this make sure it's in thirds like that make it kind of flat okay now you're gonna take and fold it into like thirds here and then this is gonna go up inside your pocket and that makes your pillow mine is a lot thicker than most of them are gonna be but Okay, now because I, this is a Christmas present for my grandkids and I forgot to tell you one step and I've already wrapped them. So I'm going to just give you a little example of how I finished it off. I took regular thread. I didn't want to go to the store and I just took regular thread and I did four strands together. And now what I'm going to do is to finish off the quilting. And if you have a pattern, you can sort of pick the pattern pieces and be consistent. And I'm going to turn it over. I'm just going to go in and out real quick to go through both parts. And if it's so thick you can't do it, go on this side and then bring it back through right next to it. Like that. And pull it through. And pull it all the way until you have just a little bit left. And now I'm going to tie it off. like that and then leave about maybe a half inch and cut it off and you just keep doing that over the pattern I'm going to go up here now and go through this basketball tie it off tie it tight you cut it about a half inch. And you're going to do that all over the back of the quilt. And you can see then that causes your quilting. And so that when the when you wash them, then this the middle batting doesn't get all squished around and, and it'll hold it in place. So do that to the entire quilt. Far apart. About every four, four to six inches, I would say. Whatever your pattern allows. And if you don't have a pattern, uh, about every four inches.